From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Our top story, no bail today for a Fairbanks man. Authorities say attempted to rob the Sears store on Airport Way on Sunday. 32-year-old Brandon Koenig Messer is charged with first-degree robbery and felony assault. Management at Sears said Messer was meandering through the store suspiciously for some time before he reportedly approached an employee and said, quote, call the police, I'm robbing you. Witnesses said he brandished a knife and then grabbed a pickaxe from the store to use to attempt to break into the cash box. Fairbanks police responded to this scene and took Messer into custody without incident. We had a gentleman come in here tonight. Uh, he was walking around. We noticed he was kind of suspicious, then walked up to the tools cash rep and told one of our associates to call the police, I'm robbing you. What did he do with the pickaxe? Uh, just kind of swung it around to intimidate us. We stood far enough back and didn't want to put anybody in harm's way. So how long did this whole incident last? Um, probably a good about five, ten minutes because, you know, from the time calling the police and uh, trying to get our associates away from them and customers and stuff like that, so. A grand jury has indicted a Fairbanks man on 15 charges after authorities say he broke into a home and attempted to shoot one of its residents. 35-year-old Levi Rachinsky was indicted on charges including attempted murder, first-degree burglary, assault, and theft. Court documents say Rachinsky drove to the residence on Roberts Roost Road in a stolen vehicle. He then allegedly stole numerous items including a firearm and clothing. The victims on scene said afterwards that he returned to the property with the gun while troopers were investigating. It was then that he threatened to shoot one of the men and actually pulled the trigger. The gun did not go off, but authorities say it was fully loaded. A man accused of walking away from the North Star Center halfway house has pleaded not guilty to felony escape charges. 27-year-old David Murphy is accused of leaving the facility on October 2nd. Now, Murphy is one of more than three escapees reported by the center to Alaska State Troopers in the last few months. Court records say Murphy was in custody awaiting trial on a felony vehicle theft charge, which is a Class C felony. He now faces additional charges. In Fairbanks Superior Court, Murphy asked to be appointed a public defender. Now, trial for his case is set for January 2015. Recently elected Fairbanks School Board members were sworn in during a special meeting at School District Headquarters today. Wendy Dominique and Sean Rice took the oath of office as re-elected school board members, while newly elected Michael O'Brien swore his first oath as a member of the Fairbanks Board of Education. The board was also reorganized this afternoon. Lisa Gentry replaces Allison Lambert as board clerk. Lambert will serve as board treasurer this school year. No change at the top as Dominique will again serve as vice president and Heidi Haas will serve another term as school board president. Haas was the only nominee and appreciates the vote of confidence from her fellow board members. Obviously means an incredible amount being that we've had a significant year, um, but you know every single one of us I continually remind us all that we're all on the board because we have a passion and dedication to our district and so we just ha all have to work together and get there and if if that's me this year to help facilitate that, then I'm excited about that. Governor Sean Parnell said he first heard of problems in the Alaska National Guard in the fall of 2010, but that it appeared they were being handled through proper channels. There were complaints of sexual assault, misuse of government property, and drug abuse. Parnell said he sent his chief of staff to FBI to give them the information on some of the allegations. Now a report came back to him that said that no basis was found for the allegations. I did everything at the time that I felt could be done. You know, I not only looked it into it myself with General Katkus, um, Mike Nizek also followed up on the information he was getting and was, was letting me know about that. And then when the FBI says we've got no basis for these other allegations. When we come back, another look at the people running in this year's elections on November 4th. Also, Fairbanks Drama Association opened another play this week, and it's full of mystery. Those stories plus more next. Stay with us. Welcome back. We continue now with profiles of candidates seeking state office from local districts. Now tonight we look at the race for Alaska House of Representatives in District 4. Representative David Guttenberg seeks his seventh term in the state house, while challenger Joe Blanchard looks to unseat the incumbent. Jamie Schwartzwald has more. 
Joe Blanchard has experience in local politics, serving on the Borough Assembly from 2008 to 2011. Guttenberg, a Democrat first elected to the State House in 2002, says there's still much for him to accomplish in Juneau. You know, the price of energy, the cost, the best things we can do for this town um, is bringing down the cost of energy, and that's something I've been working on for a long time and with a lot of other people, and that's important. And I just, there's a job still to be done. There was an opportunity here uh, to bring my values and beliefs to the state legislature. Um, when I saw the education session that happened last time, it was disappointing to me. There was a lot more that we could have done for teachers, a lot more that we could have done for students. Blanchard says he deserves your vote because he can work with just about anybody. Regardless of how you feel about politics in general, what party you are, if you have no party, uh, I'm the kind of person that had been able to work with everyone on the borough assembly. Um, it didn't matter if you were socialist, it didn't matter if you were, you know, crazy right. Guttenberg says he deserves your vote because he brings projects home. One of the biggest accomplishments that I have gotten through the legislature is the vet cemetery. You know, I... Um, a friend came to me and said, Rick's, Rick died and he wants to come back to Fairbanks. He's buried in Anchorage. And I started that process and followed through with it. And I had hoped that there would have been a groundbreaking ceremony this fall because the land's been bought and everything's been done. Both candidates say budget concerns will be the top priority this session in Juneau. Until we have affordable energy here, that's going to be the top of the, the issue. Um, uh, gas line issues, education funding. I mean, we're going into a budget crunch cycle, and as the economy contracts, we need to make sure that who benefits from them, who gets hurt the least. A uh, long-term fiscal plan that says what our spending level needs to be capped at, and then we'll prioritize from there. So we need to make a stand at the very beginning of the session, not waiting at the end of the session for the last week where a couple of folks will make some backhand deals, figure out how things are going to go. We need to let people know right at the beginning. Jamie Schwartzwald reporting. An in-depth discussion on suicide was occurred last week at the Alaska Federation of Natives Convention in Anchorage. A 4-H group from the village of Tanana went to the convention to bring awareness to such things as suicide and drug and alcohol abuse. They all wore Alaska State Trooper patches, a sign of support after two state troopers were killed in their village. Each of the 4-H members there had a personal connection to the problems. People have camouflaged themselves and hid their things behind camouflage, but we're, we're not hiding anymore. I was also kind of suicidal, like I did all that cutting and self-abuse and it was very, it was a very hurtful and I didn't want anyone else to do that and make those mistakes. The Fairbanks North Star Borough has issued an air quality alert. Now it says that air at North Pole is unhealthy for sensitive groups such as the elderly, the young and those with respiratory problems. The problem is caused by fine particulate pollution. The pollution will be more concentrated in neighborhoods where a lot of heating is done with wood and coal and in parking lots where cars are left idling. The alert will remain in effect until 5 p.m. on Tuesday. This weekend, Fairbanks Drama Association opened up another production. This time, it's all about the mystery. Entitled The Mousetrap, the play is considered the world's longest-running production after it opened in the West End of London in the 50s. Fairbanks Drama Association will be doing an adap adaptation of the popular murder mystery plot as a group of strangers are slowly plucked off, all while trying to figure out who is to blame. The Who Done It production is sure to keep audience members on the edge of their seats, and it is a special treat because it cannot be seen anywhere other than the stage. Mousetrap is uh, a murder mystery thriller. Uh, that's what Agatha Christie writes. She's the queen of crime novels, and so it is a crime story, but it only exists in the theater. Um, it hasn't been made into a movie. It hasn't made it into a TV series uh, because of the contractual obligations of the play, which said it can never be made into another thing except to play until it closes its initial run of performance, which it never has. Seems nice. Yeah, the mousetrap runs through November 9th at the Riverfront Theater. Showtimes can be found online at their website. That's Fairbanksdrama.org. Nice. Who done it? Who done it? Who done it? Who done it? I don't did know. it this week in sports? Oh, a lot. Yeah. A lot. A nice, a nice little transition there. Yeah, okay. We have a nice little weekend recap coming up. We'll see how the Nanics did or how they done it. Nice dogs <laughs> as well. A local volleyball team is still undefeated in the regular season play. Kind of amazing season going on mm -hmm. over there at Monroe. All that and more, including the next I-5. After the break. <laughs> the 
Hello, Interior Alaska. Joe Cook here in the sports seat for you this evening with your weekend recap. It's the best start since 2009, but the five game win streak to start the season for the number 16 Alaska Nanix was snapped this weekend. Western Michigan gave UAF its first loss of the season, a 4 2 decision on Saturday in Kalamazoo. The Broncos' Nolan Laporte had two goals and a helper for the Bronx, who never trailed after a Laporte power play goal in the first. Garrett Perry and Marcus Passar scored for the Nooks. Couldn't ask for a better start for Alaska. They were 5 0 in the non conference slate. Alaska now 5 and 1 travels to Bemidji State for the WCHA opener for both teams. Saturday night was BCDC night at the Patty Center. The Alaska Nanak volleyball team took on number 24 Central Washington in a GNAC clash. The team and fans put on pink and more to support BCDC. However, the Nanak were not tickled pink in the first set. They dropped the opening set 25-18, the Wildcats will go on to sweep UAF winning 25-16, 25-17 in the second and third sets. Linda Firethorn led Central with 16 kills, hitting 42%, while teammate Kaya Jones hit 57% for 12 kills. But on the bright side for the Nooks, junior outside hitter Sam Hartoon is now third all-time in kills with 1,031 in the last two home matches. She nailed 33 kills to go over 1,000. Alaska will try to stop their five-game losing streak and get right week. They traveled to St. Martin's on Thursday and Western Oregon on Saturday. Alaska's only two victories this season were against those two teams. Seems that the Fairbanks Ice Dogs have found something that works. Fairbanks defeated Wenatchee 3-2 in a shootout on Saturday night for their fifth straight win. That's the longest current winning streak in the NHL. It was a 2-2 game after regulation and into overtime. Both teams went 1-3 on their power play, but Johnny the Junkyard Dog Mueller Broke the stalemate with a decisive shootout goal on the fifth attempt. Chase Monroe stoned Mike Coyne to seal it for Fairbanks. Monroe made 22 saves. The Midwest Division leaders bring their win streak back to the Dipper. They host the Minnesota Wilderness this weekend to start a nine-game homestand. And now the Monroe Rams are one game away from a historic volleyball season. In Boilu Hall on Saturday night, the Rams took a two-set lead over the visiting Valdez Buccaneers of the Aurora Conference, 25-17, 25-21. Valdez, though, they avoided the sweep, coming back with a 22-25 win in the third. But Monroe closed out with a 25-23 win in the fourth to win the match in four. The win gives Monroe a 14 and O record. Their final game of the regular season is at Delta this Thursday. Monroe also beat Galena on Thursday and Valdez on Friday on senior night for the season sweep of the Bucks. The Rams clinched the number one seed in the region tournament with Saturday's win. The Aurora Conference Tournament starts November 7th at Delta High School. Other volleyball results from this weekend. Hutchison sweeps Galena in the regular season finale and senior night for Hutchison. Senior Annalie Tidwell had 10 kills and no errors. Hutch finishes 9-3 overall and 6-3 and in the Aurora. And they will be in the Barrel Invitational this weekend. In the Diamond Service Tournament, the West Valley Wolfpack took third place in the gold bracket. Stella Knox and Ruthie Hebert were named to the all-tournament team. And Lathrop earned second place in the bronze bracket. North Pole lost to Seward in the third place game of that same bronze bracket. And now we wrap up the weekend recap with this week's I-5 interior top five plays. Check them out. At number five, Monroe's Kiana King goes 28 for 28 from the service line and gets five aces in Monroe's sweep over Galena on Thursday night. At number four, senior point guard Joe Slocum with a nice pass to new big man Almir Hajjahovic in the Nanix men's basketball scrimmage on Saturday, building some early team chemistry. At number three, Marissa King finds the line on the kill in Monroe's four set match victory over Valdez to improve to 14-0 and clinch the World Conference number one seed on Saturday night. At number two, college volleyball, a bizarre play. UAF thought they had a point, but NNU somehow kept the ball alive, and Brooke Matice would finish the play for the Nooks as UAF gets the point against the Crusaders on Thursday night. At number one, Sam Hartoon, the cartoon, becomes third all-time in Alaska volleyball history, getting over 1,000 kills, 1,031 to be exact, after her 17 and 16 kill performances against the Crusaders and Central Washington Wildcats this week. To select the play of the week, go to the KTVF Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter pages, comment on the post, or email Joe Cook at KTVF 11 com for your pick. The play of the week will be revealed this Friday. The I-5 Sports Report is brought to you by Adiant Orthopedic Physical Therapy. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks for rocking with me for a little while. You're full with the forecast is next and we'll catch you next time. Welcome back, guys. Now, it's Stephanie Woodard. I'm going to be looking at the weather tonight and uh -huh. I have some bad news. Uh, what? Uh, uh oh, what? Not bad news related to weather. Yes. Uh -oh. um, we might see our first minus 
temperatures mm -hmm. coming up here in the mm -hmm. next few days. I'm sorry, Joe. <laughs> We're going to get right into it. Let's get your almanac up on your screen. <laughs> OK, so right now 17 degrees. Record high today, 49 degrees set in 1940. 27 below, Joe, so it could be a lot worse in 1996. 927 AM was sunrise time this morning. Now sunset a little bit ago at 547 PM. That gives us eight hours and 23 minutes loss of six minutes from yesterday. Let's take a quick look at the Alaska satellite. As you can see, a lot of the precipitation is staying over to the southwest, and you'll see that later on when we look at conditions across the state. Fairbanks looks just pretty cloudy, but no real action as of snow or precipitation. OK, Alaska weather for today. Barrow 15 degrees, Fort Yukon 7 above. Now they are definitely going to see some really cold temperatures here tonight and tomorrow. Fairbanks, we were 21 degrees under partly cloudy skies over there at in Juneau and Ketchikan. Rain still for them, 39 degrees, 44 degrees. And over in the southwest, you can tell it was mostly sunny today, 37 in Bethel, 35 in Colbay, but that's going to change. Anchorage and Kodiak, it looks like Kodiak had some rain showers with 41 degrees there. Okay, so let's take a look down at the lower 48. Seattle, they just can't get away from that rain. 60 degrees, okay, over there in San Francisco, Las Vegas, and Phoenix. Nice temperatures, partly sunny skies, 76 in Vegas. All right, over in Dallas, it looks like they're seeing some thunderstorms. They could be pretty strong down there. Same thing as New Orleans. Miami is pretty nice, partly cloudy skies, 83 degrees. And over in New York, Partly sunny size, 64 degrees. And as you can tell, there's some storm systems moving across the northern part of the lower 48 and over in Seattle. You can see they're just, it's looking like the rain is probably going to stick around them for a little while. Okay, back to Alaska for tomorrow. Scattered snow for Barrow. Two inches of accumulation in Nome could happen. Partly cloudy skies for Fort Yukon. Look at that temperature in Fort Yukon, seven below. And guys, that's probably going to happen overnight here soon. Sorry to say, mostly sunny skies for Fairbanks tomorrow, mostly cloudy for Healy, partly cloudy for Delta. Fairbanks is going to be in the low 20s for our highs tomorrow, but it's going to get worse overnight. I know I keep saying that. I'm sorry, but <laughs> chance of rain for Juneau tomorrow, rain for Ketchikan. Temperatures in the 40s there. OK, let's scoot on over to the southwest. Rain for Cold Bay, chance of rain and snow for Kodiak, mixed rain and snow for Bethel. Like I said, they're going to have it over there, as Mike likes to say, mixed bag of weather with rain and snow. Bethel 32, Cold Bay 39, Kodiak warmer and 45 degrees. OK, let's take a look at the central part of our state. Partly cloudy for Anchorage, rain and snow in Homer and mostly sunny for Valdez. But the temperatures there look pretty nice. Anchorage cool at 36 degrees. OK, now let's see what we have for our kids weather watch today. Another fact for you and we're going we're taking it way back. 1764, a storm with snow and high winds produced 22 inches of snow in Massachusetts. All right, thanks to Mount McKinley Bank for sponsoring that. And Mike Schultz will be back next week and this week and next. Until then, we'll share some unique and interesting weather facts with you. There it is, guys. Three degrees tonight, partly cloudy skies. And for tomorrow, 23 degrees of partly cloudy skies, but I'm sorry, here it comes. There she is, first minus temperature, 25 degrees on Wednesday. Could drop. It's a range, so it's five below to five above. So, you know, it's, it's, we could still skip away from that, but it's coming. The, the, uh, the mm. negative temperatures are coming. Yeah, Joe, prepare uh, for winter it. Winter is coming. It's like the old BB King song. The thrill is gone. Yeah. The thrill is gone. <laughs> just embrace it. Gone. It's just, it's going to happen. And right in time for Halloween, right? So right. we're going to have some frozen popsicles out yes. there for trick-or-treaters. Get your snow suits on. Uh -huh. It snowed last Halloween, didn't it? What are you guys no. going to be for Halloween? Did, and it snowed it, it was so no, warm. No, it was it fall. Was, it was actually It was spring, actually so, fall. Yeah. Oh, OK. I'm it was it kind of a rarity. Green grass. Yeah. It was cool. But not this year, But you didn't answer me. What are you guys going to be for Halloween? Uh, Just me, only taller. <laughs> uh, this guy, uh, Joe Cook, I hear he's pretty cool. Yeah. So oh, try, to, try to be him. Oh, my goodness. Try to be a better him, I should say. <laughs> very yeah. good. I'm not you guys telling. You so silly. What are you okay. going to do? We, it's, a secret. it's a secret. No, I'm just kidding. Uh -huh. What do you think? Um, a mermaid. Taylor yes, Swift. Yes, you saw it. Uh, I saw Taylor it. Swift. No, okay. no, no. A mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All, All right. right. Well, I can't wait for that. Love it. Okay, that will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. All right, tonight on NBC Nightly News, the latest on the efforts to contain Ebola. That's next with Brian Williams. You can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. Okay, from all of us here at the News Center, have a great night. We'll see you back here at 11.